Yes, there we are. We're going to wait for her to join us. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Yes. Are, are you in Mauritius currently? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. Excellent. We have a few of your countrymen uh, who have joined us for this conversation. So let's, let's get to it. Um, the coronavirus crisis has had a massive impact globally. And, um, you know, we haven't seen the numbers that have been predicted in Africa yet. Um, and so, you know, I'm just wondering your thoughts as a former leader on how you think that, what, what you think the, the response, what are your thoughts are on the response from African leaders who have been, um, you know, kind of responding to this crisis? What, 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 what have been your impressions? Um, you know, initially the prediction was that Africa wasn't going to work up. This was uh, the prediction that was made according to the models that were worked out, that Africa would be most impacted. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised to see the response coming out of Africa, where they have taken the problem head on. Mm -hmm. They have acted very fast in some countries. Um, they have closed airports. They have taken mm -hmm. lesser measures. And uh, we even have seen one African country who has had the cheek of saying they have the remedy for it. Yes, yes. We're definitely going to talk about that. What I mean, so, you know, you have written extensively about medicinal plants from Africa and, you know, why we should be using them. Um, so what, what, if you, what do you make of this Madagascar, so-called Madagascar cure? I wouldn't say it's a so-called cure. I'm in fact very surprised by the international community for having acted on it fast enough. Uh, you know, there is an entire discipline uh, in science, what we refer to as reverse pharmacology. You know, to develop a drug, you take the plant and you isolate the component, exactly what has been done with Artemisia annua to get Artemisin as an isolated molecule but increasingly, the science is recommending that you adopt the reverse pharmacology method, which is you take the observation as it's happening on the ground and you take it back to the lab for validation. And this is exactly what Madagascar has done. Right. In fact, I'm surprised the plant community has not helped Madagascar to validate this and come up with a cure faster than, you know, that we are, we are, we are doing at the moment. So maybe this is something that we can talk about later. Yeah. So why do you think why do you think that has happened? Why do you think the international community has not responded to this? <laughs> we are seeing world politics say in action. So. <laughs> okay, expand. Tell me more about about that. Well, you know, uh, Madagascar is a poor country. Uh, Madagascar, you know, has not been the good child, the poster child for development for far too long. Too many coups. You know, everything it has it. How can it all of a sudden come up with something when the entire world is running short of ideas? So it just doesn't fit in the, the international narrative, I think. That's oh. why instead of running around Madagascar, we are just, uh, you know, throwing a problem at them. That's very yeah. unfair. So you seem to have some insight into how this remedy has been developed. Um, and how closely are you working with, with, uh, with talking to um, the Madagascan scientists who, are, who have been working on this? Or what kind of involvement do you have? You seem to have insight into what, uh, what they're doing. Um, you know, I worked in my previous life, uh, very involved with that institute. And uh, late uh, Philippe Rachwanev, uh, he has been a colleague of mine. We have worked on many projects before. So I'm very uh, attuned with the work that has been going on at the LIMRA, Institut Malgache pour la Recherche Appliquée. And in fact, uh, the founding father of IMRA, he was Prince uh, Rakut Raksimamang, a very well-known figure in, in, the, in the, the colonial days of Madagascar, and himself uh, with uh, uh, Pierre Boiteau. They had developed Centella asiatica, and Centella asiatica, the extract of that plant, had been used to treat leprosy. And they had also developed a very important phytochemical, a phytochemical uh, agent, rather, against diabetes. 
And interestingly, uh, when the Malagasy pre president spoke to the French press, he brought up that plan, which I thought didn't exist, had gone into oblivion. Made glucile, which regulates the blood sugar in, you know, blood sugar, which tantamounts to treating diabetes. And that product now is being developed by Bayer, from what I understood in his conversation with the press. So mm -hmm. it looks like the things are still happening. I haven't been following up with them recently, but I know the colleagues working out there, they're doing some serious work. And um, also, we will forget that Madagascar is one of the, bi along with us, Mauritius and the surrounding Mascarene Islands, we constitute a biological hotspot in the world mm -hmm. biodiversity. So there's plenty of need, plenty of new ideas which can potentially come from, from here. And yeah. I think we, it's in our interest to go back to that law and do something about it. So um, President um, Andri of Madagascar has accused the WHO and other international community, community of being condescending by dismissing this drug or this, um, this remedy. Do you agree with him? You know, uh, if you look at WHO figures, WHO figures tell you that 80% of the world population still depend on herbal medicine for their primary health care. So these are uh, figures which come from WHO itself. So if there is that recognition by WHO that 80% of the world population, which is not a small figure uh, when you think about it, and here we have a prime example of uh, what the country has done in terms of you know, empirical information that are translating to, uh, to a product, which could, I'm not saying that it is doing exactly all it's doing, but what they're claiming is that uh, while they're observing people taking that, that product, they are getting good results. Mm. So this is why I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, gray zones there as to why the international community, the scientific community, has not jumped to the bandwagon to try and see what's in there. Right. So if it is giving a shot, maybe 10 people, maybe 20 people, I don't know. But they are claiming, and I think it would have been very easy to just go and test that quite fast. And then also they would have known by, by putting a few labs together to test whether it had any secondary side effects. But having said this, you know, the Artemisia Anuma, the same approach which is being done by Madagascar, is also being done in parallel by the Max Planck Institute, working on the same type of approach. So it remains to be seen, you know, why uh, the, the idea coming out of Madagascar is not being retained by the international yeah. So tell us about this plant, Artemisia. My, my um, you know, I, I, I think I've read something about it being used in anti-malarial drugs anyway. So it's, it's a drug that's known to the scientific community. Is no, that correct? Uh, the story, story goes back to the Vietnam War, right? It goes back to the Vietnam War when the, when the Viet Cong went to Beijing and asked them for a, a, a solution because... Uh, their soldiers were, you know, dropping like flies in the face of malaria in that part of the world. And China gave them precisely an extract of Artemisia annua. So this use of that plant has been documented in Chinese Mokopia for a very long time. Mm. Now, the fact that this is there, and then we mustn't forget that in 2015, Professor Tu Yu from the Chinese Academy of Sciences got the Nobel precisely for this. And she, through her work, she isolated artemisinin. And we know that there are not many cures for artemis for malaria. There was uh, the in China before, which gave us the quinine. And now we have uh, the, the artemisinin. So there are not many in between. So she has got the Nobel and uh, it's a recognized um, use for, for, for malaria. So it's anti it is working and even hydrochloroquine and chloroquine, they have been testing that uh, for its antimicrobial and antiviral potential. Right. So it's, um, so if, if it's uh, being done, if you've been tested by the Max Planck Institute uh, out in Potsdam in Germany, along in collaboration with the American firm, and there we have malaria, Madagascar, which is now testing, doing the same thing. So we can all draw our own conclusion. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it seems that African countries, leaders of African countries are just going forward and getting this, this um, tonic anyway um, from... 
have uh, have uh, Down syndrome. They have got it from Madagascar. Yes, I mean, um, I, I think at least fifteen, by my last count, have ordered this this um, tonic. What really mm -hmm. can be, uh, you know, a side effect? So, you know, what could there be anything um, wrong with taking a herbal remedy to if if it's been proven to um, to treat successfully some some COVID patients? Well, according to literature, uh, it says that uh, some uh, little children are being given uh, this against malaria. So if some people are treating little children uh, before, uh, with using uh, that herbal remedy, I can only presume that uh, you know, it is not toxic. Now, what the side effects can be, I don't know, because uh, what the president has said is that this Artemisia has been mixed with some other Malagasy plant. Now, you know, when you have a mixture like this, you can have two things. It can potentiate and make it better, or it can put in some side effects. But for, again, from what he is saying, again, I, I just quote what he said, he's saying that people are taking it and feeling better. Right. So, you know, the work needs to be done. But I think that uh, the, the techniques are there, the acceptance is there for the international community, that we need to go back to what is known as real pharmacology, and look at what's happening and take it back to the lab. Right. So what, um, what tests or what clinical trials or clinical studies would need to be conducted uh, on this remedy, if any at all, to get it to accept uh, acceptable global standards, if, if, if I may put it that way? The protocol for testing herbal remedies is not the same as that when allopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. And this has been, you know, you know, you know, the 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 the, the protocols are there, and it doesn't adopt the same route. Now, as I said, uh, Indians have been doing a lot of work in this area since so we've had uh, uh, SARS, right? They have been putting their own pharmacopoeia, which is very well documented, uh, against antiviral and, of course, uh, pulmonary diseases as well. So they have been testing that big time. So they already have got many plants which can potentially go in the pipe. Uh, for the testing of the corona. And I'm sure that if we speak to the Indians, they will also say that uh, their pharmacopoeia is ready for this. Now, I don't, know, I don't want to extrapolate, but is there a correlation to the low numbers coming out of India? Mm. And there are two detectives, so I don't know. So I don't know. But mm. they are interesting to, to make the comparison. Yeah. So really what I'm hearing is that the international community needs to not overlook these important um, kind of developments from, from uh, you know, India, from Africa, because they're not the kind of traditional routes where these medicines and remedies would normally come from? Well, you know, we are where we are. We don't have a vaccine just yet. We don't know whether we'll get a vaccine because we never came up with a vaccine for SARS. 30 years after HIV AIDS, we still don't have a vaccine for HIV AIDS. So we are where we are in terms of what exists already in the in the you know in our uh, in a you know kind of locker of full of previous oral remedies, and then we have this. What do we have to lose? To try? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I mean, you've been a fan of Africans using herbal remedies anyway. You've written several books about it. What do you think needs to happen for? these herbal remedies to gain acceptance globally? We need to change our way of looking at it ourselves, Africans. Can you explain so that? <laughs> we need to accept our own heritage. We need to accept our own traditions. And we need to go back and document our traditional knowledge and do what the Chinese have done. They have given equal recognition to their traditional medicine, to allopathic medicine. And this is quite recent. So it shows how seriously um, Chinese are taking their own medicine, their own tradition. And yet we tend to look down on ourselves. So if we look down on ourselves, I mean, the chance that other countries, other, other parts of the world will, will accept it. So we need to accept it. And there's so much in terms of uh, herbal remedies in Africa that we need to take her seriously. But unfortunately, uh, because we are where we are in terms of transmission, the transmission has been mostly oral, 
we haven't uh, really, uh, you know, documented that as it should be. So this is why we have this issue of uh, acceptance, I think. Yeah. So what's the situation like in, in your country, Mauritius? What's, what's the current uh, caseload and, and, you know, inf infection rate, etc.? Uh, we have recorded just over 300 uh, infections and we've had 10 deaths. Uh, so judging by our population size, we are the second most impact, second or third most impacted countries in Africa by virtue of you know, population size and death and all that. Um, I think for the past 10 days, uh, the country has been reported zero contamination and zero new, no new infections. So by the end of this week, we are slowly uh, lifting down, lifting uh, the lockdown. And right. we are hopefully to be back to normal uh, by the first week of June. Right. Okay. Well, that seems a very positive um, kind of, you know, trend. So we hope we hope that continues. But you know, I, I know that this conversation will go on and on. You know, it, it seems to be a, an ideological difference uh, that we're we're faced with. But African leaders. By, for the most part, are going ahead and saying, you know what, we're not going to wait for your vaccine. We're going to take our chance with this remedy. And uh, it remains to be seen uh, if that happens. Um, if that for at least another year or two. At least. Yeah. Because the, the beast is the mutating. So if, if you take, I mean, the, it will be very, very difficult to develop a vaccine. And the same thing happened with SARS in 2003. And yeah. in fact, SARS had been treated partly with artemisinin, and that's another corona. Yes, and it was successfully treated at the time. Yes, at the time, with yes. artemisinin. So again, it's worth pointing out that, you know, we've had, uh, uh, you know, kind of examples before. We've had precedents with artemisinin being used against uh, precisely uh, you know, SARS, another coronavirus. Right. Okay, well, I, I know that this conversation is going to run and run. We may even get you back. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been fascinating to talk to you thank today. You. Thank you so much, Amina. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Okay, well, so... There you have it. Um, you know, the, the, the very strong comments there from Amina about us embracing our heritage, our medicinal plants that have seen us for centuries and, and you know, our ancestors and, and uh, former generations have used these um, remedies successfully. So it remains to be seen whether this Madagascar tonic will be adopted um, globally. Uh, that conversation is um, heating up and we will definitely bring you updates on that. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we're back tomorrow with uh, another round of heroes and newsmakers. So join us then. Thank you.